If I hear that, it's your fault. Uh, Fabu, I know what the consequences are. Hey, guys, welcome back to another interview here on Tone and Entertainment. Today, we're at CCW Bash at the Brew. New location here. We're no longer at the Unbranded Brewing Company. Now we're at the Tank Brewing Company, and I'm joined by Fabu Andre. How are you doing, Fabu? I'm feeling wonderful, and now we're standing here in this AC, but you still got a little bit of sweat on your forehead. I always will. That, that nothing, not much will change with me, though. Fair enough. Now, speaking of not much changing, that's not the case for you. I feel like in the past couple months, a lot has changed in the career of Fabu Andre. Oh, yeah. The metamorphosis always continues. And if anybody who is watching this now has paid attention to CCW over the past couple of months, you would have seen my former best friend and now hated enemy, Tony Donati, stab me in the back. I was going to say, just uh, about two months ago, we had a podcast. You guys were on it. We did the uh, top 10 tag teams of all time. And I invited the Heavenly Butterflies on there. I needed, you know, some big time tag teams on the podcast. And then like two weeks later, everything just went to hell, essentially. Are you saying this is your fault, Tony? I, no, no, not at all. I don't want to take blame. It better not be. It if I hear that, it's your fault. Uh, Fabu, I know what the consequences are. You've chased me away before while doing your makeup. You're goddamn right. I will not. No. You were there. You were Tony Donati. You were at Hardcore Horvath. It looked like you guys were forming, you know, quite the trio. But, you know, Hardcore said he's not really into the butterfly things. And now those two guys have got their eyes set on tag team championship gold. I've got my opinions on Hardcore Horvath, and honestly, I think he's the one who got into Tony's ear. In my opinion, I am the better half of the Heavenly Butterflies. And I think everybody would agree with that opinion, but Hardcore Horvath doesn't. I believe he is the one. I don't have any proof that Hardcore Horvath did this other than out of just sheer jealousy. I mean... He, is, he does match Tony's hairstyle. They're both going bald, so. Nobody can have the, the beautiful flowing locks like Fabu Andre, though. Not even you, Tony. Not even me. I'm trying, but it's not happening. It still looks good on you, though. I appreciate that, though. Now, you are a CCW guy now, and you're doing a lot of wrestling with CCW from Tampa to down here in Miami. Uh, but you're also doing a lot of work with the NWA as well, too. Tell me a little bit about that. So we have done some work with the NWA over the past year, and actually we are doing some more work with the NWA coming up in my home gardens of Sarasota, Florida at the Robarts Arena on October 26th. You can catch the butterfly there, and that will be an exciting matchup. Last year, we stole the show, me and my former best friend, Tony Twist, when we took on Daisy Kill and Talos. Man, if anything says, like, tag team wrestling, I mean, going up against Daisy, 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 Kill, and Jack Talos. Oh, yeah, they're fantastic. They are absolutely too. a staple in NWA. You know, I was just talking to somebody while you were getting ready here, and I told him I'm doing an interview with Fabu, and I said, you know what? Fabu was one of my very first interviews I ever did at Blueprint Wrestling. I'm thinking 2019, right? So let's go a little bit back. You know, 2019, we had just met. What would you say has been the biggest change in maybe your career in those five years since I've known you? Staying healthy, staying strong, getting stronger by the day, getting better by the day. I will never stop improving. The metamorphosis does not stop for any reason. The only time the metamorphosis is going to stop is when I choose to lay down and stop wrestling. Now, I love a good ring entrance, and I think, Fabu, you probably have one of the just uh, the most jamming ring entrances. Um, even Lisey, the, the ring announcer, really gets down into it, and she's pretty, she's very professional, but when your song comes on, when you come out, even she's dancing in the ring. What goes into creating just an awesome ring entrance? I just feel it. I mean, it took me a long time to perfect what I needed to perfect to make my ring entrance, the best ring entrance here in CCW, to get the fans into it. It took a lot, but I mean, now it's just... It's just natural to me. I walk out there and I just feel the music. I don't hear my music. I just feel it. I've learned it so well. I've used the same song for the past five years or so. I mean, you need to 
build your own entrance. You need to be natural going out there and you need to feel it. You need to let the fans get into it and let them know that you're having the most fun out of anybody in that building. And anybody who knows what fun is, is going to want to join in with you. I mean, I always have a good time just jamming out in the crowd. I'm not a dancer, but when you come out, man, I am dancing out there in the crowd. Oh, yeah. Everybody becomes a dancer when they see well, me. That, that, that's for damn sure. The world of professional wrestling is just a crazy place. And I like to use the term bizarro. So in your pro wrestling journey, what's the most bizarro thing that's happened to you, whether it was in the ring, a fan interaction, just in your professional wrestling journey? Two odd ones that pop up off the top of my head and that I will always tell people. One is wrestling in an apartment complex in Japan and the other is a fantastic fan up in Birmingham, Alabama who goes by the name of Peanut. This short, old, angry man gets into it like nobody else I've ever seen. He comes out with a megaphone and he's not afraid to speak his mind. Trust me, I've heard him say some questionable things and threaten me personally with being ran over, being stabbed. This peanut, if you ever wrestle near Birmingham, Alabama, seek peanut out. He is the fan that you want to get an interaction with. He sounds like an easy guy to find then. Oh yeah, it, he's hard to miss for sure. Okay. Now let's talk about that apartment complex in Japan. Like you think, okay, I'm gonna go wrestle in Japan. I'm thinking, Beautiful mountains, scenery, the culture, the food, an experience of a lifetime. And then you wrestle in an apartment complex. Oh, yeah. Okay, what goes through your mind when you show up and you're wrestling in, room, in front of room, you know, 112? So originally I did train in a ring in Japan, and then the person that I trained in the ring with introduced me to another person. I went and actually trained at the apartment complex first as a little evaluation to see if I could even qualify to compete against the women that she trains. The woman whose apartment complex I wrestled in is Emi Sakurai. Oh, okay. Okay. From AEW. AEW, right. Okay. I really didn't know what to expect. She had two apartment buildings. One was for the wrestling. One was for us to get changed, and I assume where she lives because there was kitted out just like a house. You know, we got suited up inside her house, and then we walked next door and we wrestled. And there was about 100 people there. Okay. In this apartment complex, I don't know the square footage of it, but there was about maybe two wrestling mats, like high school wrestling mats, and maybe 10 feet on either side for people to walk and there was two big windows, and there was people looking through the windows, there was people sitting all around us. So we did have to be a little careful. There was no, obviously no ropes. It was the strangest thing, but it, the fans were into it, and they were so appreciative, and I was just amazed by what all went into it. And at, at the end of it, Emmy actually made tea for every single individual who purchased a ticket to come and see us, and we handed out the tea and sat around in a semicircle and spoke about essentially what had just happened. That sounds very cool, actually. That sounds like a hell of an experience, to be perfectly honest. It was. That's why I can. That's why I remember it so well because it was an experience unlike anything else I've had in wrestling. I've had a lot of different experiences in wrestling, but that's one that just sticks out. That's definitely something else. Now here at uh, the Tank tonight, what do you got going on here? So tonight, I was originally supposed to wrestle Meadow, but that match got taken over by QT Marshall. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, yes. Yes. But tonight, Jackal Stevens was going to face Tony Twist one-on-one. -on -one. And Alex, hardcore Horvath, that big bald, was going to be in Tony's corner. But I went and spoke to some people, and now I'm going to be with Jackal against... Tony Twist and Hardcore Horvath, who I lovingly call the Baldies of CCW. So a little bit of revenge here with Jackal Stevens by your side tonight. Oh, yeah. 
Well, I definitely can't wait for that. Uh, Fabu, is there anything else we should touch on while we have you here? October 12th. Don't miss it. Tampa Bay, Florida, the Heavenly Butterfly Special. I will be kicking Tony's ass without Hardcore Horvath to defend him in a bunkhouse brawl. Don't miss it. Catch the butterfly. Can you give me a little insight as to what you're going to bring to the bunkhouse brawl? I'm going to bring a little bit of Western flair. I'm going to bring my wings. And I'm going to bring something to beat the hell out of Tony Twist and get payback for what he did to me. The blood on my face, there's going to be twice as much on his face after that bunkhouse brawl. Well, it sounds like Tony Donati, Tony Twist, whatever he's going by now, is definitely in for one hell. I mean, that's if he survives tonight here in the tag team match in Tampa with you in a bunkhouse brawl match October 12th. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, Fabu, where can people follow you at, my friend? You can follow me at Fabu Andre, Instagram, Tic Tac, Facebook, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it. Fabu Andre, the monarch of manliness, the one and only. I'm hard to miss, and I'm easy to catch. You just got to look for me. And I'm also on YouTube. Well, there you go. Well, guys, make sure you're following Fabu Andre everywhere. I can't wait for that tag team match tonight. And then eventually, we got to get you back into, you know, Meadow. He could become the champion here tonight. So you were supposed to have a match. I think that could put you up there for a title shot if something changes hands or if it doesn't change hands with QT Marshall tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd look forward to it either way. I want singles goal for Fabu Andre. And uh, also what I want you guys to do is uh, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already so you can stay tuned in here to Tone and Entertainment for future videos. Catch Tony and catch the butterfly. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.